I think that the market's going to continue to move up because companies are continuing to move up. And uh, I think that a year ago we were talking about the global synchronized expansion, but we had tax cuts, we had deregulation, and so the U.S. has moved to the head of the class, and we're going to continue to, to go higher. And sure, there'll be trade tensions, and there'll be a couple steps forward, one step back, but the earnings are doing well, the economy is doing well, and so there's really not that much to worry about. If we didn't have trade, I'm, I'm not really sure what we would be worried about because things have been so good. The data we get just keeps coming in very robust. Consumer confidence, even yesterday the PCE numbers are finally at the Fed's target. I'm not really sure what investors, what more they could want. And trade, um, that's one of your concerns, but it, it could be, uh, trade could either be a negative, it could be neutral, but no one ever talks about that it could be a positive. And Elarian was actually on, uh, it's a cool name, Elarian. It sounds like, a, you know, yeah. almost, you know, like in a, in a, some kind of movie or something. Would be Errol Flynn. Yeah, yeah, like would, yeah it would be, he would be the, the protagonist. But he said his numbers were like 65% uh, that uh, we bet trade, world trade stays basically the same and maybe is a little bit better because we improve it a little. 15% that this is a Reagan moment where you throw out the old model and it's really good and trade barriers come down everywhere. Or I think it was 25% it could be a bad outcome. So that's 65 plus 15 is, uh, how much is that? You've got right, 130. So, overall, the, so, so, so the that's, chances that, are that, things that's, are going to be better. Yeah, that, so to say trade is the only fly in the ointment, I mean, it's, it, theoretically, it, it might, you know, we don't know whether it's going to be positive or negative uh, at this point. Now, so is it just as simple as... If I look at earnings per share growth, you know, year to year, going out to 19, 20, 20 can I just say that the market should move up that much? Because even if multiples stay where they are, I should at least get a stock market that, that correlates with earnings gains? It should definitely correlate with earnings gain because what are you doing when you're buying a stock? You're buying that earnings stream. So it definitely, that's the fundamental driver of the market. Now, sentiment does play into it and in that's at times investors are willing to pay more for earnings than at other times. And uh, one of the things that's keeping us on, on track is that investors have not been euphoric. They've been a little bit pessimistic and we haven't seen the euphoria in the market, which gives me more confidence that the market is going to go higher because investors are being a little bit, a little bit picky on and they're looking for good stocks that have good growth and good earnings stream so this is a market that doesn't show any kind of signs of, of froth really that investors are being uh, they're being particular about what they buy they're looking for quality earnings and multiples are not off the charts they're right in line and we are worried about trade. We're worried about uh, emerging markets. We're worried about the, the rest of the global economy not keeping up with the U.S. But right now, the U.S. is the place to be, and it's just keep, it just keeps coming in better and better. So I have high expectations for third quarter GDP, and I'm looking at earnings growth for the third quarter, and it looks like it's, it's really just... In fact, a lot of sectors are ticking up. The automotive sector is the only one that's had some revisions down. But overall... Earnings continue to deliver, and that's a great sign for the market.